Now, wouldn't it be nice if we had receptacles that would let us know that something is going wrong and we need to take a look at it? And not just that, but let us know specifically which receptacle needs to be looked at. Well, that is exactly what Leviton has done with these new GFCIs. They are now Wi-Fi enabled. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how this is installed and I'm also gonna show you all the features and exactly how this works to basically make your home a safer place. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So here is your standard GFCI, which is ground fault circuit interrupter. And what that means is in the event of a ground fault, a GFCI is basically kind of like a circuit breaker. It just acts differently, where instead of detecting too much current, it is detecting ground faults that might happen. That's why these are installed in your bathrooms, your garages, your basements, and a lot of wet areas, because in those wet areas with that water being present, it can introduce the possibility of ground faults happening. So when we take a look at this GFCI versus this GFCI, there's really not a whole lot of difference. They look the same. They've both got the reset and test buttons on them. They're both 15 amp. One difference though between the two is this one over here is not tamper resistant, meaning it does not have those little plastic doors that go across where the plug goes in to help protect children from sticking things into the receptacle. Whereas with this new smart GFCI from Leviton, it is tamper resistant. So you do have that safety feature and typically that's gonna be required by code. And outside of that, the only real other difference that we can see between the two is down here in the bottom left corner of this new one, you can see the little Wi-Fi symbol. So first thing I need to do in order to install the new GFCI is to remove the old one. But just like always, before we do anything with electrical work, we wanna make sure that the power is off. So what I wanna do is find the circuit breaker that is sending the power to this receptacle and turn it off. Now that I believe that I have found the correct circuit breaker, I wanna test to make sure that the power is in fact off. So I'm gonna take my outlet tester, plug it in. And as you can see, the lights on the outlet tester are no longer illuminated. So it's now safe to remove the receptacle. Okay, so on a GFCI, the wires have to go on specific terminals. If the wires are reversed or installed incorrectly, this GFCI is not going to be able to protect any of the receptacles or anything else that's downline that it's installed to be designed to protect. So for this mock-up, I have this GFCI here, and then I also have an outlet down here that this GFCI is protecting. So in the event of a ground fault on this receptacle, if there's an issue with this one, it's going to cause the GFCI here to trip. All right, so as you can see here on the back of the GFCI, it has its instructions all over it. You can see where this says hot, which means this is the side that's getting the power. That's why you see these two black wires. You also see these gold or brass colored terminal screws. That indicates that that is your hot side. Where you see these white neutral wires, you'll see where it says white. So it is actually directing where each wire goes. Now where it gets really important with a GFCI, whereas in this case, the words are upside down, but I think you can still see, it says line right here. So this terminal and this terminal are where our line wire goes in. The line wires are the wires that are bringing the electricity in from the circuit breaker or upstream. And you're going to have a hot, a neutral, and a ground usually. Then up here where it says load upside down, the load wires are what then take that electricity and then send it downstream to the other devices that are being protected. So a good little trick to use to make sure that you don't get your wires mixed up is while they're still installed, just take a piece of electrical tape and just wrap it around those line wires. And then that way there's no mistaking which wire goes where on the new receptacle. The wires that are flagged with the electrical tape are going to go in the line terminals. And then of course, the ones that do not have the electrical tape go in the load terminals. All right, so now at this point, I can loosen up all of my terminal screws. And as I'm loosening them up, I can be removing the wires from the GFCI receptacle. And when removing wires, I always like to start with the hot side, then move to the neutrals and take those wires off. And then finally remove the ground wire. All right, so as you can see, I've got two sets of wires. I got my wires that are bringing my power in. I've got my wires that are taking my power out to the other receptacles downstream. And then I've got this one lone ground wire. And you might be wondering, why is there only one ground wire instead of having two? Well, if I pull this all the way out of the box, you will see 
that there are actually three. This ground wire up here on top is coming from my load side. The one in the middle is coming from my line side. And then I made up a pigtail to the GFCI. And that's because in this case, since I have two ground wires coming into this box for the line and the load, I need it to only be one in order to connect it to the GFCI. The GFCIs are designed to only handle one ground wire. So I had to make a pigtail and the easiest way to do that is to just take a pigtail or a spare piece of ground wire and then connect it to the other two wires using some form of splicing device. Now in this case, I don't mind using these lever connectors. These are the Wago 221s. They're super DIY friendly and easy to use. They just have these levers that flip up. And when those levers are flipped up, these wires are then free and the Wago can be removed. And just as easily as it was removed, it's just as easy to install by inserting the wiring into each one of these ports. So I'll just install that one right there. Once that's in place, I'll flip this lever down. I'll just put the second one in, flip that lever down, and then I'll take my pigtail, insert it into that last port, and then flip that lever down. And if you flip these over here to the bottom, you can see through the bottom and you can see that it's seated all the way up. So we know we have a good connection there. Now there's all kinds of splicing devices. These are very, very easy for the DIYer to use. The wire nuts are also a very good option to use in connecting wires together. So it just comes down to your preference, what you wanna use and what you feel safest with knowing that you're going to connect your wires as best as possible. And like always, I'll have links for these Wago connectors. A lot of people also ask me about this electronic screwdriver, which works really, really well. These combination bits that are literally made and designed to go in a terminal screws better so that there's no slippage. And of course, the new Smart GFCI that's being installed. I'll have links to all of this down in the description down below. All right, so here on this new GFCI, if we flip it over here to the back, just like the old one, you'll see it says hot wire over here. It says white wire over here. And then underneath of this yellow sticker, it's also going to say load. Now this sticker is just here with an advisory on it, basically letting you know what these load terminals are for and that you need to read the instructions as to how this is all supposed to be wired up before you go about installing it. So when I go to install devices, I like to always start with my ground wire. There's this green ground screw here at the bottom. And it also has a little hole where there's a plate where the wire gets slid into. So I'm just gonna take that ground wire, slide it in underneath of that plate, and then tighten down my ground wire. Next, I'm gonna work on my white neutral wires. And on the back of the GFCI, it says right here, white. And if you flip it over to the side, the screw terminal color is a silver color. So I'm gonna start with my white neutral wire that's coming from the load side. I'm gonna install it on the bottom here where it says load. And then once that's in place, I'm gonna tighten down that terminal screw. Now I'm gonna take my white neutral wire with the flag on it, which is coming from the line side. So we want it to go up here on this side where it says white and line. So again, I'm just gonna take that wire, slide it up underneath of that plate, and then tighten down that terminal screw. All right, so now all that's left are my two black wires. So first one I'm gonna do is my load wire, which does not have the flag on it. I'm gonna connect it down here where it says load and on the side where it says hot wire. Just gonna slide it in underneath that plate and tighten it down. And last but not least, I'm gonna take my last black wire here. This one has the flag on it for our line. This is the one that's actually bringing the power in. I'm gonna connect it up here where it says line and over here on this side where it says hot wire, slide it up underneath of that plate and then tighten it down. All right, so now all of the wiring is connected to the new GFCI. Push the GFCI into the box itself and then tighten down the top and bottom screws on the GFCI that are then affixing it to the box. All right, so now at this point, everything has been installed. So now I can turn the circuit breaker back on that's supplying the power to this receptacle. And as you heard there, the receptacle made that chiming noise. That's letting us know that power is flowing to the device and it's currently in test mode. Now we also want it to be in test mode where this light is blinking when we set this up in the app. So now I will go into the Leviton app. Then once I'm in the app, I just hit the plus button in the top right and add a device. Now I'm not gonna go through all of the steps with you as they're all very self-explanatory and they're also gonna be somewhat selected based on your preferences. And then once you go through those easy steps and the GFCI is configured and connected to the Leviton app, you're able to see in real time 
what state it's in. It's going to show protected and with a green check mark letting you know that it is not in a fault mode and that there's nothing wrong and everything can still be plugged in, power still flowing through it, and it's ready to detect a fault should it come. You can go in your notification settings, turn on the notification setting for if the GFCI trips, it's going to send you a notification. So in order to do that, I'm going to show you exactly what this does. I also have a setting in the app to where you can turn on the audible alarm. So also when this has a ground fault, it will also make an alarm noise. So I'm going to simulate a ground fault now so you can see what that looks like. So as soon as the ground fault happened, we lost our light down here at the bottom right. You heard that click noise and now you're hearing the audible alarm from the GFCI trying to draw your attention to it, letting you know, hey, there's a ground fault here, something needs to be addressed. You also in real time are gonna get a notification on your phone that says your GFCI outlet Leviton GFCI bathroom was tripped. So not only is it letting me know that this was tripped, it's also letting me know exactly which one because I can name them for what room that they're in. So it makes it easier to locate and know which one has an issue. Then if I go into the app, it's also going to show that I have a fault, but I also have an option I can hit silence audible alerts. So I won't have this alarm going off in my ear anymore. So if I just click on that, the alarm turns off and now everything is silent, which I'm sure you're thankful for now. And as you can see, it says fault. So most of the time when you have a ground fault, it's usually caused by a faulty appliance or whatever you plugged into it. There is probably a defect with that particular device. It could be water that was introduced to what is being plugged in here or to the receptacle itself and this is also letting you know that if you have something that you're plugging into this that's causing a ground fault it's probably time to replace it or at least find out what's wrong with it and get it repaired one area where this is really really nice is for refrigerators in the event of a ground fault you'll get that notification right away say your refrigerator your freezer goes out and you're not home or you don't know that there's an issue you could lose a lot of your food that's in your freezer or your fridge. But in order to get it back to protected mode and powering the devices again, it's as easy as hitting the reset button, just like you would on any GFCI. That green light comes back on, and you'll also get a notification on your phone letting you know that the GFCI has been reset and it is back to protected. So this is brand new. It's really, really cool. Very helpful. It can definitely add a large safety aspect to the home. And I absolutely will be installing these throughout my house. Now, if you found value in this video, I did a video fairly recently that you also might find a lot of value in where I take a single gang box where normally you would only be able to install one receptacle in that single gang box. And I install a device that allows for you to basically have two receptacles in that single gang box so that you don't have to cut that box out and install a double gang box. Super easy to do. If you're interested in that, I'll post a link to that video right over here. When you click on it, it will take you directly to it. So as always, I really do hope that you found value in this and you found it to be interesting. If you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.